Hey, there we are. Look at that. It's 9 o'clock in the East Coast. That means it's time for this week at Gear Report. This is the show where we talk about everything that's been published at Gear Report since last week. Uh, things are upcoming in the review queue, the, the ever popular generic shit shooting segment of the show, which honestly we kind of interspersed through the whole program. And of course, this week, our special guest is going to be Carl from Saltwater Arms. So we're going to dig into that shortly. But first, let me introduce our esteemed panel. Uh, so let's see. Let's start. Oh, oh, here's a good one. We're going to start with Zach. Oh, Zach Attack oh. is back. Um, Hello, guys. Yeah, I just made that up on the spot, actually. Hey, I, I get it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so y'all may remember uh, Zach was here uh what four or five weeks ago or so with facts and firearms yeah, so yeah. as we do often we invite uh we invite the cool people back to be a part of our expert panel and help interview the the cool new brands that we talk to each week so zach thanks for making the time to be with us i'm sure that we're gonna have uh an excellent show thanks for having uh, me let's see I'm afraid to click on TJ. TJ's been having echo issues. So here, let's see what happens when I click on TJ. All right, I hear the echo already. Okay. And then he muted himself. This is going to be yeah. interesting. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry about the echo, everybody. I've got, I've got a new setup and no speakers. So I'm going through the TV, uh, the TV speakers. Oh, so does it? I bet it has a little bit of a delay, and that's what's causing it. Yep, that's mm -hmm. the problem I was having a couple of weeks ago when I had a new setup. I, I think I've got that sorted now, so we'll have to work on that before the next show. But unfortunately, tonight TJ may be muted more than normal. Um, only when he's no. not talking, he's gonna mute and talk, and then boom, mute again. I think we can make that work. All right, I'm playing with some new camera angles today, or a new camera angle today as well. So. If you're out there, leave a comment. Let us know that you're there, what questions you have. If you've ever heard of Saltwater Arms uh, or their other companies, if you happen to know who those other companies are, you're welcome to spill the beans on that as well. And any comments along the way about how, uh, like I have a new audio set up today, so any comments on that would be appreciated as well. All of those things, oh my goodness, Crystal has been paying attention. She knows that on this program, it's three yo's or nothing. And Crystal coming in strong to get this, this show started. Thank you. We really appreciate that. All right. So now let's get to our, um, our brand guest this evening. I'm going to bring Carl on the screen. And let me see if I can get there. How you guys doing? Maybe that'll work pretty well Great. for her. Yeah, doing well. Uh, happy to have you here. So thank you. Uh, I, I, the way we like to start, oh, come on, ghost, oi, oi, oi. We said, yo, yo, yo. But at least you got three of them. So you know what? We're going to roll with what we can get. And and Carl, I apologize that uh, we have a little bit of uh, weekly shenanigans that uh, tend to, to be interspersed throughout the show each week. That's and, all right. Uh, so, yeah, it, it keeps it fun. And it yep. uh, gives us an opportunity to harass people like our buddy Trey at Ghost Tactical. So, um, yeah, we, we'll continue to do that as time permits. So, um, oh, and look at that. We should make a point. TJ, did thumbs up or thumbs down? Should I spill the beans since we know Ghost is out there? I think he said I should. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Ghost, you're going to have to stick around if you want to hear, if you want to hear, um, the the secret i've been keeping uh it involves a certain birthday boy so we'll, we'll get back to that one later don't let me forget um okay so carl saltwater arms that's an interesting name um how, how about you dive in give us a little background on the brand and then um you know how it came about what 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 differentiates you and uh and we'll, we'll go from there so the idea behind Saltwater came about uh, about 2019, and it was basically the idea of our CEO, Chris, and one of his friends, Paul. Um, they saw this, this void in our market for corrosion-resistant precision rifles. 
And obviously, this has been attempted a few times for people to build corrosion resistant rifles, and they weren't too successful. So between Chris um, and Paul, they tried different things, different coatings, obviously lots of stainless steel um, and succeeded. We They created uh, the Barracuda, the Blackfin. Uh, those were the two rifles basically that came about at first. Um, as we evolved, we saw demand growing for the pistols. So we actually, uh, about eight months ago, released a seven and a half inch 5.56 pistol. Uh, it's the, our customers are, are just giving us rave reviews. Uh, we're having, you know, the idea originally was to, to create these for the, the coastal areas, you know, the East coast, West coast, mm -hmm. Florida. Sure. And, and then we started noticing people buying them everywhere in the Midwest, you know, in Arizona, I mean, like out of all the places, you know, it's dry climate. Why would you go with something that is corrosion resistant? Well, if you want something that you can put away for six months in your truck, in the trunk of your vehicle, whatever it may be, um, or where condensation is an issue. Obviously, in, in the desert areas, you still get condensation at nighttime. It gets cold. You get four or five guys or, or ladies uh, get in the vehicle and you get condensation on the gun. And that happens enough times you get some corrosion unless you maintain that firearm. Well, with salt water, with the use of stainless steel, the nickel boron coating, uh, some Cerakote, obviously, and then everything else being aluminum, uh, besides the furniture being plastic, that mitigates that the issue of, of corrosion. You know, put it away for six months, pick it up, put a mag in, you're ready to rock. Nice. Okay, so... Um... You know, we, we skipped over the, the introductory portion, um, and I skipped that. I apologize. So uh, what, what do you do there at Saltwater? What's your role, and, and how did you come to, to be a part of that family? So I actually started at DRG, which is the parent company of Saltwater and White Label Armory. Uh, started out just doing sales, and I'm currently the sales manager. Um it's been a long three and a half years. I've had a lot of fun and I, I hope to uh, continue having lots of fun because the gun industry is a very interesting industry. Uh, every day you come into work, you learn something new. Uh, we're surrounded by, by people that basically complete each other. Everybody knows something that the other doesn't. And this is what makes, this is what makes it fun, actually. Everybody, everybody works together um, and it benefits our customers because we've put uh, lots of ideas together and there's a whole lot more ideas coming uh and it's it's created an environment where we can put out a great product at a phenomenal price and at the same time offer a lifetime warranty mm. okay interesting so so zach you're you've been embedded in the industry for a while is this uh is this a challenge that you've seen tackled before um, I mean, really, uh, I, I don't even, I don't know to this extent. I mean, I had, you know, I've got a couple questions maybe for later on, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think I've really seen anything devoted this serious to that kind of thing. I mean, yeah. really the first thing that came to mind was maybe Anderson's R85 coding, which is, I mean, that's mm -hmm. more of a, you know, no lube kind of deal. And, but I, I do think it is kind of towards the corrosion resistant part too, um, but no, I mean, this is pretty cool. And, you know, I've, I've worked with DRG and White Label and, you know, they're cool companies, you know, uh, Dave Rybecki, you know, we just talked to him the other day. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've, it sounds like some pretty cool stuff. So, you know, I'd like to learn more too. Yeah. TJ, since you've, uh, you've had one in your hands for a bit and, and uh, I can tell you the muzzle device is fairly durable, but that's a story for later in the show, probably. Uh, you, you have any initial impressions uh, having having just received one recently? I mean, initially, it's I mean, it's just a, it's a first of all, it's a great looking rifle. I mean, everybody who sees that thing is like, like, what is that? I'm like, check it out. Uh, you know, open it up and everything looks. I mean, it looks like it's going to hold up. I threw it in the pool the other day. I got a video of that. It's a saltwater pool, so I, I, I threw it in there. I got a video of that. It's going to be a short. And uh, yeah, it, I'm not I'm not drying it off. I'm just, we'll see what it does. Like I said, but I, I mean, I look at it. I have full confidence. I mean, it looks the in, in, in internals are all you know stainless. The barrel, the muzzle device, Jeff, can be dropped. Yes, 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. On end. Mm -hmm. well, Someone had to. In the name of the test. <laughs> that guy over there. So, yeah. but, I mean, initially, I haven't even I haven't even got it to the range yet. I've just been throwing it in water and, and putting it outside. And so. And so I'll the, tell you, the, the interesting thing is actually that with saltwater, everybody thinks this this gun is all about corrosion resistance. There's a lot more to it. I obviously own a few of them. Uh, I get to play with them here at work. Um, I get to take them to the range all the time. And what we're finding out is uh, the barrel itself, which obviously Faxon knows a lot about barrels. Uh, there is something about 416R that, that makes that barrel uh, be way beyond of what 4150 would have, or nitrate would ever do. Um, I've gotten groups that were sub half MOA. Um, obviously every barrel, every gun will have a particular round or type of ammo that it likes, certain grain, certain brand. Once you find that, that one ammo that works for that particular gun, just feed, feed that beast, that ammo, and, and you'll be golden. I'd like to throw in, um, <clears throat> what, you know, I've seen a lot of barrels in my day. Uh, I mean, even with 416R being so non-rust itself, you know, that's the one of the ideas behind 416R is that it's not supposed to rust, really. Uh, I mean, I've seen nitride barrels rust. You know, it's usually a one-off thing and just a weird, just weird. I mean, it was in like a, you know, dark, cold room that's probably too damp. But, uh, you know, I mean, so that, you know, nitride is a great coating and I'll stand by it forever. But, you know, it's it's pretty interesting that... You know, this coating is so resistant. <laughs> That's a great shot. Yeah, we, we had a little fun with this. I, uh, as far as you know, I made the trip from North Carolina to Florida just to help TJ with filming this shot in the saltwater pool with the surfboard. Um, That's really cool. We right. actually had a customer, um, out of florida uh, he's uh just south of uh, naples and he purchased two of our pistols and i'm like oh, this is interesting we usually see somebody buy one but this guy just buys two of our pistols so i gave him a call and ended up talking to him for almost an hour uh come to find out the guy is an avid fisherman goes offshore all the time 200 miles offshore goes down to the caribbean and he was like you know what I've had a lot of guns on my on my boats and they've always rusted. When I saw this idea that I can actually get something that is corrosion resistant, as I'm in. So he bought two of them. Um, I called him actually about a month later to see how the guns are doing. He goes like, they're exactly what I expected. He's keeping him on the boat. When he goes offshore, you never know what you're gonna come across. You know, We're not supposed to have pirates, but who knows? Uh, he just, it, yeah. it makes him feel better knowing that he can protect himself and uh, he keeps both pistols on his boat and in case something happens, he can defend himself. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Florida's Florida's unique. Like I said, where we live, it's on the Island. I mean, I'll get just between the humidity and the salt air off the ocean. I mean, about once a month, I have to pull the guns out of the safe and, and wipe them down <laughs> and just check them and then make sure they're lubed up. Because if not, there's, you know, I'll get all oh, there's, I missed a spot and it's, it'll start getting a little, little spot rust. And I'm like, yeah, be kidding me, but it's, I mean, it's just Florida. Everything rusts, there's so much salt everywhere. So, like I said, I think that, you know, down here, I think it's going to, they're going to do really well once people find out about them. That's why I was, I was excited about it because, you know, there's a lot of boats. A lot of boats and a lot of people that can use something that is going to last a long, long time. And we have gone out of our way. I mean, the springs, the detents, the smallest little things are all stainless. Um, and, Something that we are really, really proud of is the fact that there is not a single part on any of our pistols, rifles that isn't made in the U.S. Every single part is either made by us or uh, close partners of ours, uh, like little detents. You know, we're not going to use a half a million dollar machine that we can run something else on to make little detents. So we will outsource something like that. But that's that's a small little part. You know, everything that's the heart and soul is basically the BCG and the uh, and the barrel, and we make that and everything else pretty much in house, but not the little springs and detents. The furniture um, isn't uh, made by us. Obviously, there are people that are really good at doing things like that, and we we partner up with them and source parts as as such as the furniture from from our partners. 
So you said it's been a, a long three years or so. What what kind of challenges have you run into uh, in getting, uh, I guess, getting this this additional brand up and running? Uh, first thing was testing, testing and testing and, and more testing. Before you put out a new product, you want to be sure that it is 110%. And we've seen over the years products that were tested, but they were not tested enough. And then when they were released, they failed. And we you only get one chance at success. If you screw it up, you're going to pay for it. The brand will disappear. And we didn't want to do that. Uh, lots of companies have done it right. We've watched them. We've emulated them and we made sure that Saltwater followed a, a procedure to make sure that the product that's coming out of our factory is what our customers expect. And we want this to be in their hands for the next 10, 20, 30 years or longer. And they are proud to take it out of their safe, shoot it. Um, I've been to ranges actually all over our area and people will, you know, I've seen actually our guns in somebody else's hands. And I pretend that I don't know the brand. I start talking to them. I want to get feedback from them. What do you think? I'm yet to hear something negative. So that makes me feel really, really good. And once they tell me something about the gun, then I tell them who I am. And they go like, oh, that's awesome. Why didn't you <laughs> tell me that from the get go? It's like, because I wanted your honest opinion. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we do that. Nice. Uh, well, well uh, if I may interject, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, local ranges around us where, where, where our plan is in it's cool to go there and you know a lot of our, the ranges have our guns and to see people shooting our guns and you don't you know you don't say anything and you're just like and they're like man you know come check this out to one of their friends you know and it's like ah that's pretty cool yeah so i get it yeah yeah um i think rod gets it as well with the just gun care but uh i can't tell if he's a fan or not <laughs> You know, if you're in the business of, of products to preserve guns, do you really want guns that are corrosion proof? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's a tough crowd here, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure he meant that in the most positive way possible. Um, so, so that does sound like, um, I, I think you said testing. Uh, it was one of the challenges. I'd like to describe to you a test that we did um, a few days ago, and uh, and and you know this is this is part of going above and beyond when we when we get a, a firearm in for testing. And TJ got a uh, a really cool uh, sling with the quick disconnect fittings, um, and and the one on the back uh, right by the castle nut that. Uh, I must not have got that in all the way because I'm playing with the quick release slide thing on the uh, on the sling. And next thing I know, the whole thing just jumps loose and straight down on the tile floor and it bounced. I'll tell you. But the uh, the the muzzle device has got uh, just a tiny if you look real close, you can see a little flat spot where it hit. But it didn't uh, didn't fracture, appears to still be straight on center line and everything. And uh, and TJ you know, in his defense, didn't even like come across the room and take my head off for dropping that brand new gun right there on the tile floor. Oh, we've all been there. Part of testing. Oh, yeah. Part of testing. I bought an yeah. Amazon uh, setup for a sling one time. It was like $15 quick disconnect and it just fell right out. Rifle hit the concrete. Yeah. That's the thing. With, with QD, you got to be careful what you buy because uh, yeah. I, I have seen that issue. And we, the whole end plate is actually machined. And mm -hmm. is machined to a really tight tolerance out of stainless. And like I use Magpul uh, slings and never had an issue. So if you put a good quality, you know, attachment to it on it, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Again, it, I'm not sure what you yeah. were using, what brand it is, but that's they, were, they were UTGs, UTG uh, quick disconnect. So, you mm. know, okay. yeah. it was it was a get monkey sling, though. It looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, maybe we're going to grab that at some point. But uh, so speaking, of, speaking of that end plate, um, honestly, um, taking a look at it, the, the stock photo here, I, I I don't think it really does justice to what it looks like in person. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we're being honest, it it's a really nice looking that that looks a little 
the the picture maybe even makes it look a little bit rough and it's a very nice looking machine and when i and when i came on the site and saw what it cost i was like wait a second really yeah like, that's <laughs> more of a standard price not a stainless you know i i don't know i don't buy a lot of these maybe that is uh ref, uh, uh an accurate uh market price for a machine stainless end plate i don't know but it it looked like uh it, it appeared a little underpriced to me based on um, how, how it looked, you know, standing there looking at it in my hand. It's a great value. And, and we sell a ton of them. Uh, people are using them. I mean, looking at the cost of a regular steel one from some other brands and this in stainless, why not spend, you know, it's basically the same price as, as regular steel, but get the stainless right. one. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, that, that's interesting. So you got me thinking the next next build I do, uh, I might be worth uh, looking into to doing the like the lower parts kit or something too. And so we obviously sell the LPKs, and as well as the uh, the BCGs, and the BCGs have uh, been a big hit. Uh, it's everything is basically. Whatever we could, we made it out of stainless from the camp in. Mm -hmm. To the uh, the two screws that actually hold the gas key down, to the retaining pin, the firing pin. Um, it's an 8620 carrier. It's a 9310 bolt. Uh, the nickel boron coating is actually done by WMD. Um, so it's a very very high quality nickel boron coating. Uh, we didn't spare. It. There was no expense spared. Uh, we do something very unique with uh, our bolts and carriers, which we actually grind them. A lot of companies hard turn their uh, bolts and carriers, um, meaning that they 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 hope that their heat treater, they hope that their uh, uh, the whatever company does their nitride coating will always do the same thing. So that as the metal grows and contracts from the temperature changes, you hope that it's always the same. What we actually do is with our carriers and bolts, uh, they are heat treated, then they are ground. So whatever discrepancy happened during heat treat, and it could be the material difference. There's always small differences between each uh, lot of, of material. We ensure that all those issues are, are mitigated by, by grinding the surfaces that actually matter. Uh, and this is why you see great consistency over in our product. There are lots of companies that do it just like that. There are some that don't. Uh, this is why you pay a little bit more for obviously a high quality product because there's a lot more effort put into it. Um, we go out of our way between our, our QC department. Every time the parts go out um, for, for the heat treat, obviously we don't heat treat in-house. Uh, yeah. Whenever we do the coating, when they come back, they get inspected once, twice, third time, fourth time, so that when that BCG gets put into a rifle or a pistol, it is going to last essentially a lifetime. Nice. I'm happy to hear you use uh, WMD guns. They have been friends at Gear Report for years. And uh, I always hesitate when people talk about corrosion resistant coatings. Like, do I even want to go down that rabbit hole? Because I know if they say anything other than WMD, I'm going to be I'm going to give them the eye roll. And that's, you know, that's bad form when you're when you're interviewing to give people the eye roll. But that's uh, th that's good. So, um yeah, the more I learn about the brand, the more uh, the more I like what I hear. Having had my hands on the rifle, it looks really good. Has some really cool touches, um, like the the stainless takedown pins that have the little caps on them, so you can get get on them to pull them out a little easier. Um, yeah, lot, lots of kind of neat things. Uh, looking at the gun itself, so um, you know what. I, I think uh, let me give Zach and TJ a chance if you have anything you wanted to talk about before we move on. I want to move on and talk about kind of the bigger company and some of the other brands and how they all fit together. Anything else right now on Saltwater Arms before we, we move on? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> um, I guess this is this may be a technical question. I don't know. Um, but you say you use a lot of nickel boron and that stuff. Yep. Yeah, what's what do you um how do you feel about nickel Teflon? Um do you, you have you guys messed with it at all or do you guys not care for it, you know? We we've tested it. We we like it. Um we've actually been working with another company on a different coating. 
Uh, so this is something that is going to be available real soon. It's going to be sold through White Label Armory. Um, it's an SP4 coating. So speaking of actually testing and, and seeing how corrosion resistant something is, um, this particular BCG, um, the carrier itself, the gas key, the bolt, they are actually polished to a mirror finish. So when 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 they're done polishing this, these parts, they look like they're chromed. And then there's a coating applied called SP4 um, that gives it tremendous uh, protection. Even though it's only four microns thick, it is ultra thin. It is uh, the hardness on it is about 3200 Vickers. Um, the coefficient of friction is 0 0.01. So it's truly 100% lubeless coating. Um, and this is something that's going to be available on white label armory pretty soon. And we are, this has been two years of testing. So when it comes to corrosion resistance, um, I actually have dropped it in salt water for 30 days in and out, in and out, allowing it to dry. Um, that's when you really see the, the, the resistance to, uh, to oxidation is actually by taking it out of salt water and letting it dry it and then putting it back in. So after 30 days, none of these parts have actually rusted. So we were... Uh, quite happy with the results. Cool. Nice. All right. Oh. Hey, you know, if I didn't know better, I'd say that that question was a setup. But uh... <laughs> no, I mean not at all. I just, I, you know, I, I've you know teased around some coatings and we we've sure. messed with some stuff where we're at, and you know I really like nickel Teflon, um, but you know I, I've never really gotten to the world of looking, you know, to see if anyone offers it in bulk carriers or other components other than mostly extensions you know um right. so it's just you know good to hear some other someone else's perspective it's a very it's yeah. a nickel teflon is a great coating it's a very slick coating uh but we essentially feel that we found something better yeah and, and that's that i mean that makes sense i mean there there's plenty of different coatings out there so you know there's 100 percent chance it could be better so yeah yeah, yeah. All right, so take a look at the site here, whitelabelarmory.com. You know what? I should drop the URL in the chat because I believe that when it screen shares, it doesn't actually show that. So I'm going to drop that one in there, and I'll drop the Saltwater Arms URL, saltwaterarms.com. I'm going to drop that in the, uh, the chat for this as well. There we go. All right, so White Label Armory, uh, what, what's the story there? So, so let's start in the beginning. So DRG Manufacturing is a big OEM supplier. Uh, we've been supplying a lot of the big companies in the industry with parts. And we saw that a lot of retail customers, a lot of, a lot of dealers that are on the smaller side, they don't want to purchase a thousand barrels or a thousand bolt carrier groups. They want to buy one or 10 or 20. And that's why we created white label. It's uh, no nonsense, low price, high quality, uh, available to basically everybody. Um, you know, we, we produce thousands, tens of thousands of bolt carrier groups every month. Uh, we do hundreds, actually thousands of barrels, uh, receivers, handguards, um, you name it, pretty much everything that we make in house, by the time it's all said and done, you can put a complete firearm together. Um, and we wanted, uh, we wanted so that we wanted the big guys that we've been dealing with that are buying in, in, in large quantities are great and we appreciate their business, but we wanted to basically open this up to everybody else. Sure. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, and you're not shy about the different coatings and different colors either. So that yeah. that uh, yeah, this is neat. So, yeah, so I mean, how how did I not know about this brand? I mean, have I just been living under a rock? So, I mean, look at the name, White Label. Yeah. Right. Uh, most of the products don't have a logo on them. Um, yeah. So you might have actually seen our products in 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 people's hands and their guns. You just didn't know right. it. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me get that one off the screen, and let's get back to. There you go. Oh no, I I don't even know what I'm doing. I just kind of wing it. Um, 
Okay. We know. <laughs> Overcompensated with more yo's than necessary. I don't know. Well, man, I don't want to set the standard too high. We've had trouble getting people to commit to three yo's. I don't want to set the bar at six, but I do appreciate uh, Defense Dad showing up to go the extra mile with the, the more than appropriate number of yo's. Um, okay, good. So I lost the other screen I was going to share. I think I went looking for something and ended up on the wrong page. Like, Jeff has like 50 tabs open, so it's always a, oh, it's always yeah. a search, search issue for well, him. That, that's actually the problem is I don't have as many as I, uh, I wanted. I actually closed one on accident, which is probably okay. I'm going to go ahead and say how. I, how I how I ended up closing one when I didn't need to. Um, I had Instagram open. Oh, that is not what I wanted. Boy, it's a good thing I didn't bring that screen up ahead of time because it was about to show something that may not have been appropriate for this show. All right. I guess you type the wrong thing on the internet. Sometimes it'll take you the wrong place. <laughs> so... Um, that autofill data. Okay, now, now it's the right one. I will go and share the screen. Um, but I had the um, I had the Saltwater Arms Instagram page up, kind of preloaded. And it occurred to me that um, that I hadn't seen a post from Ghost Tactical yet about the birthday present that I sent him, the surprise birthday present that I sent him. So I went and checked the Ghost Tactical page on Instagram, and I saw no mention of it. So I'm actually pretty ticked about that, to be honest, that he has not made any public mention of the, uh, the, the birthday present that I sent him. So if Trey is out there, maybe, maybe he'll say something. Uh, about that he may have checked out already check your spreadsheet yeah <laughs> yeah my my affinity for spreadsheets uh for yeah you should today. start putting your uh your tabs in a spreadsheet as urls I just could. in case oh that yeah. would be brilliant don't give him any ideas <laughs> yes i should have signed that proud. to someone yeah <laughs> No one's claimed it. I didn't say who it was from. Yeah, I didn't even see any post about it. But so, so Ghost, Ghost Tactical, happy birthday, um, man! You for 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 however old he is, he um, he doesn't look a day over forty seven or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Pick pick a pick a low number. Um, Ghost uh, once a marine, always a marine, right? So everyone calls them the uh, the crayon eaters. So I found a bulk pack. I don't even know how many crayons is in it. It was at least a couple hundred, I think. And uh, I just sent him a bulk pack of crayons. Um, I, I believe there's a lot of crayons. High dollar, <laughs> the uh, they may have even been the high dollar um, Crayolas. Actually, Ooh. I'm not even positive. I think they could have been. Oh my goodness, twelve hundred. It was more than I thought. There we go. So that ought to keep you from starving. At least that, that should get you through the summer, Ghost. So uh, happy birthday to you. And um, and thanks for all you do and uh, and your service uh, back when you were in the Marine Corps, developing your affinity for crayon snacks. So, all right. That was a lot of crayons. 1,200. 1,200. <laughs> Imagine uh, getting that so... when you were in, like, second grade. Man. So uh, what what I'll say is I uh, I'll I'll go a long way for a joke as you can see, but um, it'd be cool if you could find you know for the when you're full. All right, I'm not going to ask you to donate all 1,200 of them, but when you're full, when you've had enough, if maybe you could toss a few towards you know an elementary school or something you know where, where the the kids can get some use out of it 1200 i didn't know it was that many or i did know i don't remember i'm not saying at least okay so uh back to our our regularly scheduled program uh so you can see here we have the instagram page um they're out there on all the different socials you can find um saltwater arms you can find white label and then um, the main brand 
uh drg i guess here that oh yeah yeah I, I could probably bring that one up real quick as well before i talk about it let's see if i go here and do share this tab all right does that bring that one up yeah so you see at the top uh, a little bit of information there oem in-house manufacturing um so there is nothing well actually i see a shop tab um but this isn't intended to be like one of the main retail brands shop takes you back to white label okay mm -hmm. it's all coming together it's making sense now it's uh drg is is quite interesting uh the gun industry is quite large when you look from the outside and there are lots of great brands out there like Faxon. Um, I've got Faxon barrels and I've never had an issue with any of Faxon's products and I, I love the brand. Uh, DRG is obviously dear to my heart because I work here. I'm actually at the office right now and I can hear the robots and, and, the, and the machines running in, in the back. Uh, right. We have over 50 employees, um, so we're not a small company by any means. The robots is, uh, basically allow us to be efficient. Uh, we can run these machines six, seven hour, six, seven days a week, essentially 23 and a half hours a day. Uh, people are phenomenal at doing many things. Repetitive work is not one of them. Uh, this is right. where robots basically shine, is because they keep doing the same thing over and over and over, and and people just we are not good at it and and it's it's not something that we look forward to just doing the same thing over and over and over right yeah so man that uh, with, with a lot of automation having 50 employees it, it sounds like a pretty big uh, operation you have there we are yeah i mean 30,000 plus bolt carrier groups a month is, is a lot of bolt carrier groups. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, cool. So, uh, so I appreciate the background there. Um, let's see for saltwater. Uh, you, you talked about, um, kind of the idea, uh, how it came about and, and how some of the customers are, all right, that was a neat little video thing, how some of the customers are, uh, uh, buying and, and using the products maybe in a little different way than than what you had in mind initially. Um, let's see. So, what what kind of uh, are you are you prepared to to give us any kind of behind the scenes info on uh, like is there is there anything new in the works? We we always like to get the scoop, you know, to get out there and um, it is not a condition of coming on the show. We don't require that you give us <laughs> you know an exclusive. Uh, first look at something but you know it's always neat if there's uh anything that that uh, you can kind of tell us about so we've seen the demand grow for anything related to 308 uh we've seen it on the drg side and we've seen the demand grow from our customers asking us can you do something in 308 can you do something in 300 blackout and we're listening uh we're going to be releasing some products um, in the near future in those two calibers. Uh, we've also considered doing a pistol in nine millimeter. Um, it's variety of product. Variety is the spice of life. You know, people yeah. want something, you know, and if, if we sure. can make something that 10% of our customers buy and then make something else, another 15%, kind of talking about saltwater, you're widening the net. You're going to catch more fish. You're going to allow more people to, to buy your product and this is what we're trying to do is, is keep everybody happy. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds good. We, we like happy people. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll remind the folks out in the comments that we do like for this to be a participatory program. Um, so if you have any thoughts or questions, uh, please let us know. And also, I mean, we've got to let industry people out in the comments as well uh, who go to trade shows, who go to different industry events. Um if you've run across uh, any of these brands, um, I guess it's two of the retail brands. Um, uh, leave a leave a note what you what you thought um, if you've uh, been able to put your hands on them, uh, anything like that. So, 
Um, yeah. So what, what else would you like to talk about, Carl? Um, we, we've kind of directed things a, a bit here, but uh, let's kind of get a little free form and, and give you a chance to um, talk about whatever you'd like. The whole idea of saltwater obviously was the corrosion resistance. Uh, it's it's interesting how the, the brand is evolving and I'm kind of intrigued by the idea that the, the new products that we're coming out, that we're coming out with uh, might not be in heart, might not be the same behind the idea of what how the brand started. Uh, we've seen a lot of brands over the years uh, come out with a product that put them on the map. And then over time, um, especially during slower times. And obviously the gun industry has slowed down quite a bit compared to what we've had in the last year and a half, two years. Uh, lots of brands are working on new products because this is time to, to release something new, something exciting. And we've got some things working in the background with, with our engineers, uh, just people tinkering with stuff to release something that is going to be even more exciting. Um, the brand itself is, is a great idea and the product is we're really happy with what we've come out with and our customers are happy with the product, but you got to keep things exciting. You got to come out with new things. And sometimes, you know, one extra person coming in to, uh, to, to work with us, will have this one. I will have this one idea. Oh, yeah. And I think we have one coming. I can't say anything yet, but it's, it's going to be released hopefully this year. And, it'll be interesting to see how, how the, the customer base responds to the new product. Interesting. All right. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. Uh, let's go around the panel, see what other questions we have comments, thoughts, anything for the, the family of brands here for Carl. I will say um, <clears throat> with the new product stuff, uh, that's always, uh, it's really fun. I mean, I work under our uh, director of product, basically, you know, development and management. And so I get to help him with a lot of testing and all that stuff. So I'm, I'd imagine you're, you have a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. But I will say that with new products, uh, it's always, you know, kind of, it's always kind of in the back of your mind, like, man, how are people going to take this? You know what I mean? Because yeah. even when you come out with something that you're like, man, this is going to be cool. This is going to be different. You know, there's always people that are like, mm. but, yeah. you know, I, I don't mean to be a downer or anything. Uh, it's, it's just... I think it's kind of part of the fun too. You know, I mean, there's not, everyone's going to agree on one thing, uh, but it's always fun with new products. So I, I hope you guys have had some fun testing like we have. Uh, that's about all I have to say, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's awesome going to the range and, and telling your boss, well, tomorrow we're going to the range and we're taking 500 rounds Yeah, and <laughs> you're paying for the ammo. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's great. We, we go out sometimes it's, it's, it's a team building, uh, thing, you know, on a Saturday we'll have five, six employees go to the range, bring in some of the new products, bring in some ammo and just put these components to their paces. It could be 500, could be a thousand, could be 2000 rounds, bring the parts back, drop them off, uh, in the QC department and let them play with it. Let them take it, take everything apart, scrutinize it, see what's happened after 2000, 5,000 rounds. You know, my shoulder has been sore many times. Uh, <laughs> and again, I'm glad I'm not paying for the ammo that, that our boss is, is paying for the ammo. Uh, but it's, it, it's what needs to be done. Um, like I said before, when you're, you're, there's an explosion happening next to your face every few seconds. You, essentially what you do, what we do in here, if we fail, um, it could be detrimental to somebody's health. Uh, so we want to make sure that whatever leaves our facility is 110% that we're not going to have failures. Uh, we hope it never happens. We uh, do everything we can to make sure that these parts are, are scrutinized. We headspace every single uh, firearm that leaves our, our facility. Um, I know Certain companies do that. Certain ones don't. We chose to do it because that makes the product better. It ensures that that, among other things, is done right. Definitely. I mean, we you know we do the same. Headspace is super important, and you know I got into firearms you know long before I got into the company I'm at, and you know, I didn't know what headspacing was. You know what I mean? It's so it's like it's one of those things that it's kind of under the radar, but I mean it's super important. So. 
And it's not, I mean, we do a lot of testing, including like barrels. I mean, Faxon, you guys are the forefront of barrel manufacturing and you guys are one of the best companies in the market. And gas port sizes, you know, uh, you want to make sure that barrel functions with just about any ammo. At the same time, you want a soft shooting firearm. So I'm sure you guys have spent countless hours deciding on what gas port size you should make your barrels at. This one might be oh, 76,000s. Yeah. This might be 81,000s. But you play with that until you get it right. And once you're satisfied, you hope that your customers are satisfied as well. Definitely. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'm excited about the, you know, the, the branch out and caliber. Um, just like I said, I mean, I, I think people will be excited as long as the, the manufacturing process is the same and, the, you know, the overall, the look and performance is the same. I think, you know, people, because people do look for, they, they, everybody loves the PCCs, you know, um, you know, some people like the 308s. I don't, I don't have any, I have like a couple AR-10s, but I have several PCCs and, and they're a little bit cheaper to go to the range with. And, you know, for a while there, that's what people were looking for. They wanted the nine mil or, you know, 10 mil, whatever, whatever they could find. It was cheaper. And uh, so it's always good to branch out. As long as the manufacturing process is the same, the product's the same and, you know, it, it performs the same people. I think people will be excited. I agree. I know one person in particular who will be excited if you happen to roll one out in 40 Smith and Wesson. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if G23 is still out there in the comments, but oh, uh, man. he is the champion of uh, 10 millimeter light, as I call oh, it. God. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's shift gears for a second. And uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to try this a little different. I'm going to share the whole window and then click through a couple different uh, things here. All right, are we on the AREX Delta review here? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, if I click back to it, it'll it'll it'll, it'll mess it up. Okay, so um, this is uh, we we have shifted into the standard agenda portion of the program where we talk about everything that's been reviewed since the show last week. Things are in the upcoming review queue, and, and we've just been mixing shit shooting in the whole time. So AREX, um, interesting story that I saw a, I think it was an Instagram post of a piece of artillery uh, besides uh, like some big Connex boxes with global ordnance on it um, in an Instagram picture, something about, you know, come by our booth at SHOT Show. So I was like, ooh. I like military stuff, especially, you know, really big guns like that. So we went and tracked them down and ended up um, uh, coming to an agreement to do some uh, uh, pretty, pretty broad product testing with them and reviews. And the first one to make it to print, just barely edging out TJ, who has an AREX Delta Gen 2 um pistol review uh on the way is caleb our hunting editor and uh he gave it pretty high marks four out of five which um if you're unfamiliar uh two and a half is 2.5 gears is what we call basically met expectation so anything above that is good four four is a really solid review i know people in the Amazon age, you know, what, it's not a perfect five? Like, guess what? We've never given a perfect five and likely never will. So four, four is pretty good. If you want to hear exactly why he gave it that rating, you're going to have to read the review. I'm not going to spill the beans on that. But I will tell you that he he did a fair amount of shooting uh, with a light, without a light. Um, he's got an optic um, either inbound or pretty close to being inbound to put on it to do some additional testing and uh, you know see, seemed to be pretty happy with it and compared it to a Glock 19 a couple times and uh, have pretty good luck with the Bellum 9 millimeter ammo from Global Ordnance as well so uh, if you're interested in that pistol uh, please go read the review see if maybe it's the good fit for you maybe it isn't I don't know but uh, maybe maybe reading that re review will help you figure out if that would be a good fit for you. And you, we got the link to that ammo in there as well. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how that matches up to TJ's review coming up shortly. Um, so now the lockdown digital wireless hydrometer review 
that, that's one I had to slow down and go, how do I pronounce that again? This is kind of neat. I've had the um, the lockdown puck. Um, uh, actually, it's just out of the screen, I think, uh, back here um, on my reloading bench uh, for a while. Uh, and it's done a pretty good job monitoring things. This kind of ups the ante and gives you uh, temperature and humidity and uh, and it tracks it so you get some nice uh, readouts through the app to to see how things are going with it without actually having to uh, open up your gun safe or gun room and uh, and check on things physically so uh, you know is this as important if you have a saltwater arms corrosion resistant rifle well i don't know <laughs> that's not for me to say but i will say that uh, aj used it with his cigars he used it um, in his gun room. And what he didn't mention that I think is also a pretty reasonable use for something like this. If you, if you saw when, when I was on the screen, I've got a wall of guitars and a whole bunch of other guitars here in the office. Uh, humidity is pretty important for, um, for guitars as well. So there are three potential uses. If you think this looks like a product that could be interesting to you, I recommend you go check out the review for a lot more detail from AJ, who, who actually put it through its paces. Um, speaking of guitars, I gave one of the, one of the lower reviews that, that I've uh, given in my, you know, I don't even know. I've, I've written eight or 900 reviews at this point. And uh, this is one of the only two, two gear reviews that I've ever published. And uh, it, it's a, a nice little guitar from IYV. It's Indian Vena, which uh, Carl, in case you didn't know, we cover all kinds of stuff here at Gear That's Report. Awesome. And, and some of you may notice that up here on the Gear Report logo at the top, it says trusted gear reviews since 2009. A couple days ago, that said trusted outdoor gear reviews since 2009. But we have branched out and are covering more things that you might not call outdoor gear over the last year or two. So I finally broke down and edited the outdoor out. So uh, to kind of broaden what, what we uh, cover to include things like guitars. So if this is something that's interesting to you, uh, you or if you're a guitar person, you, or, or even just a DIY person, you might get a kick out of reading through this one because it's actually it's different than most reviews I write it's kind of on a chronological path of it arrived on a Saturday and then I kept working on it Saturday and then Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday of that week before <laughs> I finally had it where it needed to be at short version. I should have just put it back in the box and got an Amazon, you know, return ticket to send it back. But instead I'm a problem solver. So I dug in and tried to fix the problems and I, it, it's so many hours wrapped up in this. It was, it was a train wreck, but I hear from other people. I posted this in a, an IYV guitars group and I got, you know, 300 responses from people saying that theirs was perfect. So maybe I got the only bad one they ever made. But uh, if you'd like to see all the, the cool things I had to do to get that guitar working properly, it's all detailed in there, along with a whole bunch of really kind of cool pictures. So if you're not into guitars, I apologize. You're really not going to enjoy that article. Uh, sorry, TJ. Uh, so moving on, another from AJ from Lockdown. Um, the handgun and AR upper hanger. And it's really the, this uh, textile thing with, with pockets on it hanging in the center that can get you a little bit more space out of uh, like a gun board or a safe door or something uh, gives you a different way to hang some firearms there on the door. And uh, it's got a, a couple neat, neat ways that it's uh, put up. So again, more details in the review. My goal is not to make it so you don't read the review. It's to tease you enough that you absolutely have to go read it. So please consider doing that. And uh, the last one here that was published since the show last week, a new one from uh, Adrian at, um, I want to be sure I say it right, Review This Thing is her YouTube channel. 
and she has joined the Gear Report family and uh, shared the video of these shotgun shells. And I actually had to go look this up, right? I'm editing this this uh, submission, this article submission. I get to the part where it talks about price that they're over eleven dollars per shell. I said, no, that can't be right. There's no way that can be right. And I went and looked it up. I believe that a box of five was fifty nine dollars before shipping. I can buy a turkey for like ten bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had thought of that. Um, so her her thoughts. I'll give you um, a couple little little hints. Four and a half out of five gears. Uh, she's new here, but I sent her the explanation of of our gear ratings. So she read through them and said, yeah, it, it really is that good. Now, would she say, yes, you have to go buy them? Eh, maybe not. But she says, yes, it is likely the best product in its class and price point. I'm thinking it's the only one in, in that price point. But, but regardless, you, you can go check that out. Please go check out that video. Leave some comments for Adrian uh, welcoming her to the Gear Report family. All right, so that is our very quick tour through everything that's been recently published here on Gear Report. Thank you so much for uh, bearing with me. I think this is really neat when I do the screen like this, and it just, uh, yeah, I get, I get moving. Fantastic. Cool. I might have a seizure. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to have a seizure, let me know. I'll, I'll give you the screen focus. Yeah. Okay, so I'll look later. I don't think that was uh, for that article, but I'm going to act like it was. And 59 for five shells, holy hell. I kind of agree with that, actually, defense staff. I think that's, uh, yeah. They better be good, I guess. I mean, I, I don't want to say, you know, often products, uh, it's not about the price, it's about the value. And she made a pretty good case for them, um, being more accurate in her guns and especially out at some ranges that normally you wouldn't think about turkey hunting with a shotgun at 50 or 60 yards i wouldn't at least but she seemed to think that uh with those shells it, it was a lot more realistic so anyhow i don't want to ruin that go read it if you'd like oh no we got a troublemaker here uh let me bring the ghostess with the mostess into the house Happy birthday, sir. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tastes, tastes like cherry. Yeah. <laughs> 1,100 more. Yeah. 1,199 crayons on the wall. 1,199 more crayons on the wall. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping you would enjoy those. By the way, it's crayon gum, by the way. Yeah. It's a joke up on people. <laughs> Oh man! Oh well, yeah, me for it was so entertaining. I wouldn't have told him. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want people either. going. Oh my gosh, that guy's a freak. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. All fair right. Assumption. Well, hey, now that you're here, uh, what, what do you think? You've uh, you've heard the background of saltwater arms. Uh, is that, a, hmm. is that a brand new team before? I had never heard of it until a week or so ago when TJ was telling me about it. So I went online originally. And I remember sending TJ a text like, oh, my God, that's beautiful. Um, so aesthetically, it passes the test for me. Uh, and, and I'm one of those guys, I'm not going to lie, I do bring aesthetics into guns that I'm looking to purchase. I'm not just looking for the. I, I want it to look nice and look cool and all that. And it definitely passes that test. I heard about the uh, the muzzle brake working very well on tile. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think TJ said at one point he was going to throw it in the pool. I don't know. I, I was in a back and forth having dinner. Uh, did you ever throw it in the pool? Yeah, I'll have the, I'll have the video out here probably tomorrow. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, I live in Arkansas, so it's it's humid as hell. Uh, not had to worry about salt water. Um, but the condensation for sure and all of that, I mean, it, it's definitely something that I think that 
Um, I think you'll probably get a lot more sales than you would think in like the Midwest, the central part of the country. I think you probably get a lot of people just because people are lazy and they don't want to have to take care of their guns a lot. Um, I think that's a wonderful thing. So, yeah, from what I understand so far, TJ is really enjoying it. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. that Because I don't think I'm lazy, but I don't clean my guns very often. (laughs) We're just busy is what it is. We're not lazy, we're busy. I'm busy. Absolutely. I got to test guns too. I got to make sure it's going to run dirty. You know, so. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't Absolutely. we don't clean them when we're testing them. That's it. But nope. And usually after that, I don't clean it either. It's just like, eh, you know, it still runs, good to go. I tell you, <laughs> when I can remember the Walther or something a couple years ago. I am I am on purpose shot the first thousand rounds through it without cleaning it once, and I was a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie, that thing held up just fine. So um, yeah, I get a little nervous when I do testing and I put a lot of rounds through something without cleaning it. Because I was like, eh, I really don't want to screw this up. But yeah, so far, so good. Most of the guns I've done that with are, are fine. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting. I was waiting you for the care says, clean your guns. Yeah. <laughs> now All that right. I shoot suppressed. I don't right, always I clean my guns, but when I do. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I only use Aegis, so I can honestly say that without lying. So, um, yeah. I've got, I've got a ton of the Aegis Gun Care stuff lying around. i got Crystal's won some. She bought me some for Christmas. So, Jeff, um, we were on the, on the podcast the other night, and we were talking knives for a few seconds, and TJ made a mention that he doesn't own a, a, like, like a pocket <laughs> knife or anything. Yeah, and we were yeah. going through, and he says he yeah. likes karambits. So yeah. I ordered him a karambit, and I'm sending him one. It's going to be similar to this, except it's maybe black instead oh. of blue. But uh, wow. so he's going to have his first folding knife, and um, I'm excited. So we'll see. I'm excited. He's not like just saying that. Use it for for cutting uh, cutting things and digging up stuff out of the dirt, like I normally you do. Gotta use it stuff. for what you got to use it for. I'm right. trying to keep it as my it's, going out knife. A karambit is more of a fighting knife, but this is basically the same one you're going to get I mean, it's sharp as hell and you can sharpen it with anything else. But I mean, it, it'll, I'd say, well, it'll destroy the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, oh, and in case anyone missed it, we had uh gizzard Gary's here with the appropriate number of yo's. Thank you. Uh, so everyone, please be on your best behavior behavior. I can say that word. Um, Gizzard Gary has the ability to ban you from the discussion. We should just call him Force Hammer. Can you do that in Melon now or no? Uh, he can do it. Okay. He can do it. He can do it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, anyhow, I just like to call that out um, and, you know, see if I can tempt some people to push Gary's buttons and we can have a meltdown and a ban hammer swing right here live on a show. That it seems like it would be terrible, <laughs> but also entertaining. And as long as it entertains me, I'm good with it. So uh, you're not supposed to just buy a new gun when the old one gets dirty. You're not the only one who's been doing it wrong, Defense Dad. Yeah. Yep. But uh, but anyhow, if you have to clean it, I hear he just gun care makes some good stuff. So go check them out. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Indeed, it does. Okay. All right, folks. So um, let's talk about real quick because we were making it through our normal agenda. We did we did recently published, right? So now the next one is upcoming reviews. Since you're talking about knives, I did want to point out to you, Trey, that um, I did hear that on the podcast. I was listening, and. Um, you lie. And then TJ called me today and he was telling me about it. He's like, dude, you're not going to believe this. It's like, uh, actually, I do believe it. Now, I, I want to I preface this by saying, TJ, I'm not buying you a $400 karambit, okay? I'm buying you about a $25 karambit, but <laughs> it's, it works just fine. So That's awesome because, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I, I wouldn't spend I that much on my I'm not going to spend $400 until, you know, at least I get a reach around or something, you know? Oh my goodness. Definitely. That show went <laughs> off the, 
off the rails in a hurry. So uh, speaking of upcoming reviews, uh, one that I've been carrying for a while that's getting closer to the uh, to, to having a review published is, uh, I want to be sure I pronounce this right, they call it uh, M. Custa. M. Custa, all right? And we saw them at SHOT Show, and last day, we were almost done and walking out, and they had these really neat little, uh, I think it's like a G10, and it's got some uh, engraving stuff in it in Japanese, and it's a pretty cool little Damascus blade. And they sent a couple of these out to a few of our writers, and uh, we should have some reviews coming up on those here shortly, if I can figure out where my camera went. Trying a new camera position today, and I keep reaching, for, looking in the wrong place, and everything. But uh, but it's kind of funny that you're talking about expensive knives, um, and I kind of have had a habit of uh, of treating guns kind of the same way as well. Like I've got some that I take out and I I baby a little bit more, and I have mm -hmm. some that I don't mind dragging up a rope into a deer stand or throwing in the Humvee and you know letting it bounce around. I, I I like them all. So, uh, but this one, this is the first like three hundred dollar pocket knife I've ever had. And I'll be honest, there are times it, it stays on the little side table, and I put the twenty dollar one from Walmart in my pocket just in case you know it falls out. So, but that review is upcoming. So, any anyone have any uh, reviews you want to talk about uh, real quick? Kind of tease a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm hopefully in the next day or so going to get out and do the torture test on the SAR AR pistol and the RX or Eric, whatever you say it, um, Delta X, which I'm loving that gun so far, by the way. And I've got to do some testing in on the grand power Excalibur. So those are the three that mm. are coming up pretty soon. Um, sorry, I'm getting texts all over the place, but, um, yeah, those are the three coming out. Uh, I've got a Savior Equipment, the Coffin Rifle Bag, or AR Pistol Bag, I guess, whatever you want to call it, over here that I've been working with. So that'll be coming down. So I've got four or five probably in the next couple weeks. I'm trying to get, I'm going to try to tell you what, I'll try to get two a week for the next three weeks. How about that for you? Wow. That's a, that's a rough pace like, with uh, this time you know, of year. But if you can do it, it's, it's only, it's only going to get worse. That's why I'm trying to like backlog yeah. them now because it's getting ready to get really crazy after Memorial Day. Yep. Yep. I hear you. All right. We appreciate that. TJ, what you got coming? I got the, uh, you know, the, the ARX Delta Gen 2 L coming up right, right here in the next day or so. will be in there. The BRG9 Elites, the, uh, the CSR 556 from Wolfpack Armory, and the uh, Barracuda from Saltwater Arms. Nice. So I've got a lot of a lot of shooting to do. Yeah. All right. Looking forward to that. And let's see if I get this page loaded in the background. I should have thought ahead on this one so that I would have it ready to share screen. And we'll come to here. Uh, tomorrow, I get to pack up the Humvee and head down to Denton Farm Park in Denton, North Carolina for the 2022 edition of the Denton Military Vehicle and Gun Show. So uh, if you want to know what that is, you can go to Gear Report. And I have got a, uh, a usually pictures. I think there are a few videos in there. Um from the show for 17 18 19 20 was canceled those bastards and then 2021 um so the battle wagon 3 will be on display this weekend if you happen to be in central north carolina and you want to swing down to the denton farm park uh and check it out um we, we only i mean that that truck only gets displayed about eight or ten times a year this is the biggest longest uh it'll be out there all weekend and available for people to check out so we may even do some rides if anyone shows up and says uh hey you said on this week at gear report that uh you were going to do humvee rides so um yeah i mean hit me up if you're there at the show and uh and we'll take a ride around the denton farm park in the battle wagon three and, you know, if you want to stand and hold the machine gun, you know, stand in the turret and hold the machine gun, you can do that. Just don't shoot anyone. That's the rule. 
<laughs> oh, you got to play ice cream music when you drive around with everybody. <laughs> oh, that, that, would be, that, would that not is an be awesome a good idea. idea. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to find that. Uh, I'm gonna have to find some to play as we as because I will drive around some there uh, at the event, and I had not thought of that before. That we're, we're gonna have to do that. That's what and, I'm here. Yeah. All right. The director of snacks and beverages stepping up, stepping out of his comfort zone with other ideas as well. All right. Some more comments. Excalibur's a sweet shooter. Doesn't like to run dirty though. Is that the twenty-two? No, it's um, I would show it to you. It's sitting right over there. It's it's the nine. It's a nine millimeter, full size, five inch barrel. Um, to me, if I had to explain it without, you know, you guys can look on the website or whatever. It's over there at Global Ordnance. But to me, it looks like a tactical out, kind of like a Beretta ninety two almost, mm. like a really cool tactical out ninety two. Uh, yeah. Slide cuts and all sorts of weird stuff. Which I was I'm a thinking nice it's going with all the slide cuts on top. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yep. Yeah. And cool. it's got a, right. it, it's a rotating barrels and all that. So yeah, it's it's a cool looking gun. I've shot a couple magazines through it just, this, but I haven't really gone to the testing yet. I'm working on the Delta X right now. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, we'll look forward to that. Um, not sure what else uh, I want to talk about that's upcoming. Um, so many different options that uh what oh i didn't understand this one at first it's a little george clooney era batman looking but fun to shoot actually i think that's that's probably pretty accurate for that so it uh, has nipples Excalibur. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm not yeah. gonna lie batman is my favorite superhero but i kind of like forcibly told myself to forget about the Ju- J- george clooney era so i don't recognize yeah. him as a true batman it's Michael got its Keaton place or nothing. I mean, and Better than Ben really Affleck, I should too. say that. Well, Batfleck yeah. had his own place too, but I don't know. I'm a pretty big Batman fan too, so. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen the new one? I have. It's great. Very surprised. I was I was boycotting it because of the guy that's playing Batman. I said I'm not watching this, and then everyone I know says it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, and it was pretty good. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I had my own reservations about him, uh, but I, you know the movie The Lighthouse with him, uh, Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. I mean, it was good, you know, and I, I gave up kind of hating on him because he's really grown into a better actor. So, well, he only had one way to go, so. Yeah, that's <laughs> that maybe true. All right, yeah, reviewing a little bit of everything here. Oh, I give it one and a half thumb up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah obnoxious says uh, the new one is trash. Okay, everyone deserves so, to be wrong at least once in their life. It's true. <laughs> All right, I think that is. Uh, <laughs> I, you know what? I'm not even going to address that comment here. <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's um, let, let's see if we can get, can get back on the rails a bit here, and um, let's circle back for any final questions or comments for the um, for the DRG family of brands, including uh, White Label and Saltwater Arms. Since uh, uh, Carl's here. Any other questions or comments from the panelists for Carl about uh, any of the products or brand? Now is the time because we are wrapping things up. Um, I don't think I have any more questions, but yeah, I'm pretty excited to see this stuff. You know, it sounds pretty cool, and you know, it doesn't seem like a lot of people do it. And you know, I hope it really catches on. You know, thank you. Yeah. Um, just for the ones out there that say that innovation is is not alive in our industry anymore, we always seem to seem to see a lot of things that are innovative. Yeah. And it's not like you're reinventing the wheel here. You're not inventing a new platform, but you are filling a void. I think that uh, people like TJ and Jeff that live on oceans or nearby probably going to be a little thankful for. And um, I remember being out at Pendleton, we had to. Man, talking about having to clean our rifles on a constant basis. I would think about possibly touching base with 
a government contract possibly that could be an interesting mm-hmm. thing for you guys to think about it's actually happening right now <laughs> oh there you go <laughs> you read my mind yeah that doesn't Excellent. happen very often i'm not smart enough to usually to read but hey thank you <laughs> we saw you eat crayons we- yeah. You know, yeah. protein, maybe protein. At least he could tell the difference between the gum and the actual crayon. Well, I, I got I got close there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, allegedly he could tell the difference. Allegedly, yeah. All right. Yeah, this is the good um, I think the only other thing I had for saltwater arms is I I got to be honest. I saw them uh, on display at Shot Show. And looked in, and I mean, seriously, uh, TJ brought me back to the booth. He found it and, uh, and brought me back. And then AJ, who was running around separate from TJ and I, um, he also pulled me aside, said, dude, I found this brand you got to go look at. And here's the name of the person you need to talk to. And I was like, oh, yeah, TJ, we, we already went over there and talked to them. So two of the four people at gear report at shot show uh came to me and i was one of the people and the other one was uh uh on a motor scooter you know uh had some mobility issues it was in the press room the whole time so the only other two people who were out working the floor for for gear report proper at shot show both came and talked to me about the brand and said you got to go check out saltwater arms so uh and i had seen them there but I that that hadn't prepared me for um, the rifle when I got to TJ's last week and he pulled it out of the safe and handed it to me. And I was like, oh, my goodness, um, it, it was just striking. And uh, I'm not necessarily uh, I get annoyed by aesthetics sometimes, you know, whether it's battle worn or it's just too pretty. Either way, I'm like, it's a freaking tool, you know, make it look like a tool. But I saw it and was like, hmm you know what that's sexy so um so well well done on uh, whoever put all those components together and then he dropped uh, that i dropped yes it looked too I good yet to, you know <laughs> well it's a tool yeah you dropped it it's still working it's doing its yep. job yep yeah i am i am a little upset that on that trip uh we didn't make it to the range i would have liked to have gone and shot it um i did leave um i did leave the side door open one night when i went to bed in hopes that there would be a home invasion and then i'd get to shoot it but uh sadly what? no one took the bait <laughs> yeah please our neighborhood's on. too good i guess I'll I'll move. I, I, don't, I, don't know. Yeah. I didn't actually do that by I really the way didn't hope uh, get to shoot someone tonight mm. no I'd, I'd like to say for the record that was a joke in very poor taste. Yes. Which anyone who watches this show knows it was a good in joke. Very poor taste are about all you can hope for here. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, all boy. right. I'm not sure what that one meant, but uh, yeah, so we'll bring that up. So, anyhow, um, <laughs> yeah, I hadn't heard Illinois before. That's pretty good. You never heard of Illinois? Oh, yeah, that's a good I one. Hadn't. No, I mean, California, I knew that one, but hell of noise, I hadn't heard that one yet. Oh, yeah. Good taste. Yeah, not on this show, Rod. <laughs> not not, not really. Um, okay, so, uh, Carl, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Um, the way we tend to wrap up is just a real quick uh, lap around everyone that's uh, here for any parting words. Uh, so panelists, if you have anything that, that you're doing that you want to talk about, we hadn't talked about yet, feel free to promote that. Uh, Carl, don't worry about being promotional. We brought you on because we like the brand. So anything you'd like to talk about, um, uh, you have the floor. And then we'll, we'll move on from there. Well, thank you for, for having us. Uh, we, we were I was quite excited actually about doing this tonight. Uh, this has been a great experience. I'm hoping that your viewers actually uh, will check out our brand and, and see what we're about. Um, there's a lot more coming from from what's what we actually offer right now that we're going to have new products. We're going to keep it exciting. And uh, our team is working tirelessly to make sure that the products we put out are of the highest quality. There are a lot of options out there. And, and 
people get to choose what first thing is the look. Uh, and then once they pick it up, they see the quality, they usually end up taking it home. We've seen it over and over uh, when we go and do uh, shows, when we go to uh, to gun stores and actually do, you know, little four hour, five, six hour presentation and, and have the customers play with these guns, go shoot them in the range. And they come back and like, man, this this is a soft shooting rifle or pistol. Man, that break works. That's what we want to hear. So we will continue to innovate. We will continue producing great quality products and hope that customers buy them and enjoy them for years. Yeah, excellent. Sounds like you're on the right track. So uh, thanks for coming and sharing with us. We really appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Um, and, and Zach, thanks for coming back um, and not making it weird. Um, and I say that because I know that's a concern that, that you and I had talked about a few weeks ago was, well, I could come back, but isn't that going to be kind of weird you know, since I'm with the brand? I think that that went really well. And uh, and uh, yeah, good, good job uh, giving some industry insight and uh, and contributing to the conversation. So uh, anything you. else you wanted to talk about real quick? Yeah, sure. Uh, I want to say thanks for making me not feel weird. Um, but you guys, well, uh, just a minute ago. I mean, yeah. you know, you guys are pretty just lax wait. people. There's a reason <laughs> I came back. You know, yeah. so it's it's fun to it's fun to be on here, and it's cool, you know, to meet people like Carl. You know, I I've never heard of salt water until today. You know, when I got in the green room, I guess you call it. Um, yeah. So no, it's really cool to be here. Um, and I yeah, I, I don't want to overshadow. You know, he's the main guest. Uh, yeah. so I will say that we do have some cool stuff coming out in the next, you know, two to four months. So keep an eye on it. Uh, it's going to be pretty fun, pretty cool. We're really excited. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, I can't really say much. I'm sure that most people who've been to shot and seen our booth and been following us kind of know what I'm talking about, but, uh, you know, it's going to get real. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, oh that's gonna be interesting good light good yes. yeah, yeah 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 so yeah. uh you know Doesn't just keep often, an eye out. But... uh it's, yep. it's real fun we're all geared up we're all excited uh so yeah that's awesome good good and feel free to do this when when you have new stuff carl we'll we'll get you back on the show you can be a part of the panel and then teaser talk about your new stuff as well so uh, sounds like a plan yeah excellent uh tj I think your camera looks a little clearer this evening. Even, even though we're fighting a little bit of an audio issue, I think the, the, new... yeah, the camera is definitely better, but the uh, I, I'm gonna have to get some speakers, I think, definitely, and figure out the audio system. But uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, they're uh, sell water, the guns are awesome, and the hats and the fishing shirts are fantastic as well. So, uh, just throwing that out there, too. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> okay. There you go. Any, any, any comments <laughs> from the birthday boy? You're going to let me do a little spiel for about two seconds. Uh, yeah, if you guys aren't familiar with the Marsoc 3, I'm really trying to help out. A couple more good friends of mine. If you go to my uh, Instagram profile, there is a link, and it's to help uh, Danny and Josh and, and these guys that are part of the Marsoc 3 that were falsely accused and charged with a crime and they've been waiting for three years to hear their, their trial and they're just in limbo. Uh, legal offense is pretty expensive out there. So we're trying to do some stuff and helping out with their legal defenses. So if you guys have a $1, $2, whatever it is, anything will help, especially if the word Semper Fidelis means anything to any of you guys, um, go help and try to help us support the Marsoc threes and their legal defenses. But, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for letting me do that spiel real quick. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. All right. All right. All right. Well, that wraps it up. Um, I want to say thanks again to the panelists. Thanks to all the guests. Um, I don't even, oh, there it is. One hour and 24 minutes of your life. You're never going to get back. Thank you for squandering that time with us. Hope it was worthwhile. I know I had a great time. I hope you did as well. Um, until let's, oh, I should, we should, I should warn Carl. Here's what we do. We point at the camera, point your finger at the camera, and I'll say, uh, we'll see you at the range. And you kind of hold that until we get, then I click a couple buttons in a sequence to get rid of it. So Sometimes until it next week, I know, until next week, we'll see you at the range. <laughs> <laughs>